The video you are about to see is extracted directly from BIM After Dark Volume 3. Head on over to BIMAfterDark.com and select Volume 3 to find out more. In this first lesson, I want to start with something simple, but that will show you a lot of great techniques that you can build on and create much more complex things. So what I'm going to show you is actually the an IKEA table. And this is actually a table that um, is very simple to build in real life. Uh, you just screw on the legs, but it's got a lot of nice little features and it's even have some has some complexities that we can add to later. Um, so it's called the IKEA lack table. You can see it's just a, a simple uh, square square table with square legs, adjustable different sizes. Um, and there's also a version of it with sort of a, a, a middle piece here. So we can add to it as we, as we want, but I think it's a great great way to show parameters, um, how to flex things, how to move things uh, at a nice, nice, basic, understandable and underwhelming scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a new family. So I'm going to hit the Revit button or you can go under families and hit new. And we're going to go down to the furniture family. Now you could technically start off with a generic model family here and just change the category later. But we do know that this is going to be furniture. So we might as well start with the furniture family. So I'm going to click furniture and select open. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. So I'm going to hit control S on my keyboard and you can use whatever naming convention you want. I'm going to use the naming convention for this uh, video tutorial series because these will be packed in the sample files if you uh, decide to purchase that package. And I'm going to call this IKEA LAC table. Um, I'm going to change the backups to one because I don't want to have a million backups and I'm going to hit save. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up a reference planes. So I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts because I really think you should, especially for reference planes. And I'm going to type RP on the keyboard. So if I type RP on the keyboard, you'll see I, I bring up my reference planes. If you really don't want to use them, you can go into create and click reference plane. But I highly suggest uh, the keyboard shortcut for reference plane is one that you really build into your vocabulary because it's something you do a lot, especially in family creation. So uh, you know, learning the keyboard shortcut can help. So I'm going to type RP. And I'm actually in the in the plan view, so I'm going to start in the plan view. And I just drew a, a reference plane on top of the middle reference plane. And now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut MV for move. I'm going to move it over to, let's say, 8 inches for now. I should probably check to see what the default size is for that, just so we can start right away to that. So if I click here, uh, we have uh, 21. We'll do 22 inch by 22 inch. That's a little easier. So if I select that reference plane and I type 11 inches on the keyboard, we have 11 inches here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this over the center line. What we're doing is we're creating this skeleton that's going to push and pull it. So I'm going to type MM on the keyboard, or if under modify, you can hit the mirror button. And I'm going to select my center reference plane. So now we have two reference planes that are 22 inches apart and 11 inches from the center. Now we're going to repeat the same process in the other direction. I'm going to move this down 11 inches and type MM on my keyboard and flip it. And now you can see we've got a square, which is pretty neat. So this is going to be the frame that's going to push and pull and stretch and really control the entire width and length, or in this case, it's a square, but we'll make it so you can do a rectangle. So the width and the length of this table. So now the next thing you want to do is we're going to set up the reference planes for our, our legs. Because now we also want to be able to control the depth and the width. This is going to be fully parametric. So we want to be able to control the depth and the width of the legs. So for now, we're going to say the legs are two inches. I'm not really sure what they are. I don't have the schematic. but So I'm going to copy using, so if I select this reference plane, I type CO on my keyboard. Or if you select the reference plane, you can select copy up here. So I'm typing CO on my keyboard, and I'm going to copy two inches. And I'm going to mirror that, typing MM on my keyboard. I'm going to do the same thing up here. So copy down two inches, type MM on the keyboard, and there we go. So now you can see we've got a rectangle going, um, and it's really starting to drive things, right? So we have we have our overall rectangle here. You can see we have our little legs in here, and then we're going to use this to draw geometry. But before we draw any geometry, you want to add parameters, and you want to flex and make sure it works. I always, always say you should flex a lot when you're in the family editor, um, especially before you draw extrusions or or geometry. So now we want to add a couple things. 
So the first thing we need to do is add dimensions. So under annotate, you can select align dimension or the keyboard shortcut is DI. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our length and our width. So you can see I just hit those outside reference planes. Now I'm going to select the dimension here and I'm going to select where it says label on the options bar and click add parameter. And now this parameter I'm going to call length. And I'm going to make it a type parameter. Now we're going to do the same thing here for this uh, vertical dimension. And we're going to call this one width. And we're going to keep that as a type as well. So now what's going to happen when you flex these two is if I pull up, so I'm going under my uh, on my options bar, on my toolbar, I mean, I'm going to select uh, family types. This is where you can start flexing things. And if I change this to, let's say, three feet, I'll click apply. Notice what happened there. It didn't really do exactly what you wanted. Um, you want it to flex you know, uniformly in the width. You want the, them both to stretch out, etc. You want this to go with it. Um, same thing here. If I type three feet, you can see what it does. Not very nice. So what do we want it to do? We want it to flex uniformly from the center line. So how do we do that? Well, if we select dimension, so we type DI on the keyboard, and now we dimension to the center. I'm also gonna really quickly. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the scale a little bit so those dimensions aren't too big. And I'm also gonna type UN on my keyboard. And I'm gonna remove the trailing zeros. So if I select UN on my keyboard, I go to length, and I say suppress zero feet. It'll get rid of that and just say 11. It's just a little little cleaner that way. Okay, so now we, we dimensioned from the outside to the middle to the outside, and we have one string of dimensions. Now, if I select this EQ and I toggle the dimension equality, what, that, what that does is if I go back in here and I change this length to three feet again, notice what happened. Both, both reference planes went one foot six in each direction, and they stayed with the center line. So you still have that nice center reference plane. So now we're starting to get what we want. Just by adding that EQ, it keeps that, that center dimension, the left, right, and center dimension, exactly where it wants. So I'm going to do the same thing down here, just dimensioning to the outside and to the middle and clicking EQ. And now you'll see the width. If I change this to three feet, there we go. It's doing what we want. Perfect. Let me undo that. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to, we want these legs to move with it. If you notice before, the legs would actually get really fat the reference plane stayed exactly where they wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dimension. So I'm typing DI on the keyboard and I'm going to dimension from the outside from this reference plane to the inside of the leg. And now for the sake of this family, I think the legs are always going to be the same width. And so what, what that means is if this changes to three inch, you would think all these legs are going to change. So I'm actually going to select all three of these dimensions and I'm going to add a parameter to them. So again, on the options bar, you go to label, click add parameter. And here, I'm going to type leg width. You could name parameters whatever makes sense to you. I suggest uh, you you plan ahead of time as to what parameters you're going to want. Um, do little sketches and stuff. You know, you can also plan out the names of the parameters and how they're going to be used downstream and sort of think about it logically. So I'm going to do leg width. I'm going to keep it as a type parameter and I'm going to click OK. So now, that did a couple things. First, it's going to allow you to change the actual leg width. So if I was to pull back into my family types and I was to stretch the leg width to four inches and click apply, make sure you watch these, you can see what just happened. All of these went from the outside and they pushed in two inches. Now if I go back to two inches there, click apply. Okay. So now we're able to drive those. The other thing it did is because we're we're now we're telling this we want this to stay at two inches unless we tell it otherwise when we flex the width and the length let me pull this back open so if i type three feet on the length and click apply you'll see what happened these reference planes went with it and then if i do the same with the four inches you see it pulls in so now we're really getting something that we can flex nicely let me go back to one foot ten pull it all back there you go so now in plan view, you can see we're able to flex the width, we're able to flex the length, and we can change the width of the legs. 
So now the only other thing we really need for this uh, table before we start drawing geometry is going to be the height and the tabletop depth or width, whatever you want to call it. So now we're in plan view. We're going to go to a front or a back or a left, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go to a front view for the elevations. And there we go. So now here's here's our here's the reference planes we drew in plan, right? So we're looking at the front view. Here's the reference level. So now what we want to do is we want to create a similar type of rig, except in in elevation. So I'm going to type RP on my keyboard. Remember the keyboard shortcuts where it's at. And I'm going to draw that reference plane. And then I'm going to copy this one down two inches. We're going to say right now it's the same with you know we've got this nice little square going. So now what you want to do is you want to drive the height. So using DI on my keyboard, I'm going to draw another dimension. And now here, I'm actually going to go to the reference level for this family. So you'll notice there's a reference plane and then there's a reference level. Now I want this to go onto a level and I want it to be driven by a level. So I'm going to go straight to the reference level with, our, my, with my dimension. Now the other thing I want to do is I also want to drive the width of the table or the thickness of the tabletop. So I'm dimensioning there too. I'm going to change the scale again so that we can see things better. There we go. So now we have these two dimensions. We're going to do exactly what we did in plan view. We're going to select the, the two inch dimension. I'm going to click add parameter and I'm going to call this table top thickness. Again, whatever makes sense to you. Um, and the height, I'm going to add a parameter for that height. I'm going to keep it as a type parameter. And now, if I go to my family types, here's my height. If I want to change this to 1 foot 10 and click apply, you can see it drove this dimension up. If I want to change this thickness, so I have tabletop thickness, click 4 inches, click apply, you can see it drove this, this down. So let me go back to here, click apply, so there we go. So now if I type WT on my keyboard, I'm going to turn off the, this elevation and the 3D view for now, Plus WT. So you can get a sense of what we did. So on the left hand side, we have our elevation, our front elevation. And on the right hand side, we have our floor plan. And so you can start to see that table making taking form just out of these reference planes. So now the next step is to draw our geometry. One of the main reasons you want to set up this reference plane rig beforehand is so that when you're drawing the geometry, you can lock it to the reference planes as you draw it. It just makes your life a lot easier and it starts to help you understand how this thing's going to work in real time. So let's first start with the table top. So I'm going to click create and I'm going to create an extrusion. Now in my floor plan view, I'm going to select a rectangle. Oops, so I created the I started creating the extrusion in my elevation, uh, which is why it's only letting me draw the uh, draw it in the elevation. So what I got to do is I have to if I want to continue drawing this extrusion, I have to set my reference plane. So right now the reference plane is actually set to a vertical, which is actually this one. So you can only draw on that vertical plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my reference plane to my reference level. You can see it's showing blue there. Um, if I flip it, actually, you'll get a sense of it's showing blue there, which is my what I'm drawing on. I want to flip it onto my um, onto my level so that I can draw in floor plan view. If I click OK, it's going to say, hey, you got to use a floor plan. That's fine. Now you can see I could draw in floor plan. If I go to elevation, I can't draw in elevation. Um, for the sake of uh, your timing and, and, and dealing with this in the future, uh, just start in the floor plan. I just wanted to show you, run through it to give you an idea of if that happens to you. You don't have to necessarily just cancel the whole thing. Um, you, can, you can tweak it while you're doing it. So we're going to go back to a rectangle. And now this is going to be my total tabletop. So I'm actually going to select, I'm going to draw across. You can see how it's highlighting all these reference planes. And now this is where the, the rig is really important. So if I click, notice these four locks came up, right? If you didn't have reference planes there, those locks wouldn't be there. You would have to draw the geometry, apply, align them and lock them to it. So now just because of that, I can actually select these four locks. And when I click finish, it's automatically constrained to those reference planes. So let me click finish. And now you can see we actually have some geometry. Uh, in our elevation, you can see the, the, the block that we just created. And if I go to my 3D view, here's the block we just created. 
So now this block is actually going to be driven right now by these length and width parameters. So if I pull up my family types again and I select three feet and three feet, click apply, notice the block went with it. So that's what we want. That's exactly what we want. The one thing it's not going to go with yet is if I go back here and I change my height and I say two feet, notice it's not attached to this yet. So we have to, we have to make it, we have to lock it to, to the tabletop. So I'm going to go in my elevation. I'm going to select the block that I just created, the 3D block. I'm going to pull this handle up. And when I let go, notice that I have this lock. So now I can actually lock the geometry to that reference plane and click lock. The other way you can lock a piece of geometry if you'd like is if I undo this, if you select a line or AL on the keyboard, you can select your reference plane, you can select your tabletop, and then you can lock it. Same thing here, you can select this bottom reference plane, select the bottom of your tabletop, and lock it. Whether you push and pull or use a line, doesn't really make that big of a difference. Uh, a little more complex later on, it might, but honestly, uh, whatever you feel like doing. So now this tabletop will actually be driven uh, by the height parameter as well. So if I select the height and I change it to three feet, you can see it jumps up. If I change the thickness to four inches, you can see it'll bop down. And let me go back to where it was, click apply, and click OK. So now if I go to 3D, there's my tabletop there. So that's that 3D object. Now remember that 3D object is tied to all those parameters that we created, which is awesome.